What is up, everyone? I'm Ray Luzier from Corn. Welcome to the Valley Percussion Festival 2021. I am so honored and privileged to be here amongst all my drumming brothers. It's amazing. Um, this is the third Saturday, I believe, and it's just so much education. We're all on such different levels and different wavelengths uh, in music, and it's just a beautiful thing. So I'm going to be talking about a lot of my experiences, and the great thing about drumming and just music in general, when you pick up you know, sticks or a guitar or you start singing or any instrument out there, we're all on different stages of our journey. You know, there's different ways you can look at it. You know, some of us want to just play on weekends and we have a regular job during the week. Some of us, like myself, I took upon myself to say at a very young age that I'm going to do this till the day I die. And that's a pretty big oath to pledge, you know, at such a young age. But I didn't care if I was rich, poor, a ginormous band or an unknown band, if I was beating on street buckets, you know, or if I was playing a stadium. I knew that I was gonna play drums till the day I died. So music's such a beautiful thing. It's all around us, it's everywhere. And those of us that chose it for a profession, you know, we sunk our lives into it. We put the hard work and the, you know, blood, sweat and tears into it. And some people just wanna do it as a, you know, kind of a side thing and that's okay too. You know, I, I was a music teacher at Musicians Institute for about a decade back in the, uh, well, I started in, in probably 92. And I had such an amazing experience there because I started realizing that wow, everyone's on different levels and some people take it more serious than others and we all do our own thing and that's what I think is so important. You gotta be an individual, you know. I, I get so sick of hearing people say like, you check this guy out on YouTube, He's, he plays 800 mile an hour and I'm like, that's awesome, you know, it's, it's, it's impressive for a couple seconds to me but, you know, I'd rather get moved by someone's emotion and their groove and their feel. You know, that's me personally. You know, some people get blown away by how fast people can play. And that's awesome. But you got to look at like, OK, what do you want to do? Do you want to make a career of this? Do you want to impress your friends? Do you, you know, what do you want to do? So I'm always asking myself, you know, I told myself at a very young age, I want to make a living doing this. So and I've done it all. I've played a bar mitzvah and I've played a stadium and everything in between. And I was okay with that. You got to put in the time. You got to put in the hard work. It takes a lot, a lot of practicing. You know, I don't care um, who you like out there that's out in the big stages. They put their time in there. They put the effort and the energy into their what you know, perfecting their craft. So when you see something online, which you know, as everyone knows, media consumes our lives these days. There's, every day we have a device in our hand and we're on laptops, and it's it's we can't escape it. So. And there's a beauty about that, you know, it's weird because I come from an older generation where we didn't have those kind of things, you know, but now everything's instantly, if not sooner, you know, you can put your video online and someone in Germany is watching it. That's phenomenal, you know, but don't lose focus of why you pick these things up in the first place. Don't lose focus of like that first feeling you got when you sat down and you played your guitar, your drums, or the first time you sang into a microphone, there's a feeling that comes over. You're like, whoa, I can do this and I can... This, I feel alive, you know. I don't care where you're at, what level you're on, that never lose that passion, never lose that feeling you first had. That's super, super important. So this first song I'm gonna perform for you is from the latest corn record called The Nothing. And I'm very, very proud of this record. We put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into this. Um, Nick Rasculinix produced it. And what I love about the song I'm gonna play right now, You'll Never Find Me, is there's a lot of really it's pretty simple but there's some cool um interesting grooves going on i do a marching kind of beat in the verses and i go into a 16 note hi-hat pattern the choruses are wide open on the crash and it's very articulated uh parts on the kick drum so i'm very proud of it check it out Grading and silently making me fun now. 
So one thing I want you guys to, if anything, you get out of my clinic, um, I want you guys to really look inside yourself, find your individuality. It's okay to look up to other drummers and other people that inspire you. I do it all the time. I'm still a fan of many, many people out there. I still love to go to concerts and love to see, you know, just watch stuff on YouTube and I, I love it. Embrace it all, you know, soak it in, build your vocabulary, but find yourself in there. You know, no bigger compliment have I ever gotten than when someone has heard a recording that I've done or heard me on the radio and said, I knew it was you playing drums in the first two bars. That blows me away because we're drummers, you know, we don't have that voice or we don't have that guitar tone. You know, a lot of us can play the same groove, but when someone knows it's you for something you've done, there's no better high than that. So. That's why I'm saying really focus in on what you're all about, you know, play from the heart, always play with passion, give it all you got. If you see me play a disco gig, and I've done many of them with wigs on, and I've done, you know, all over the gamut, I put everything I have into that gig. I don't care if there's 12 people out there, 12,000 or 80,000, I play like it's my last gig. That's just what I've always done, that's all what I've always sworn by, because to me, you know, I've played some, you know, small gigs in Los Angeles where there's 12 people there. Well, guess what? One of the times where I was playing a really small gig, one of the guys at the bar happened to be Rob Cavallo from Warner Brothers Records, and he was checking out my original band, and we were giving it all we got, and he actually turned around and said, I want to sign you guys, and that blew me away. So never underestimate, you know, who's out there, who might be watching you, you know. Um, networking and the music biz part of it is such a huge important part about this. I mean, it's one thing to get your craft down. It's one thing to go, hey, I'm gonna, you know, I used to think myself, I'm gonna lock myself in my drum lab and play six to eight hours a day and I'm gonna get so good that no one will turn me down. And that wasn't the way to look at it. It was good that I was in there shedding all day, but uh, I didn't realize that you needed to go out to network and you needed to go to a bar and you needed to go see this band and hand out the business card back then. Now it's everything's on uh, media, but you really need to be around people that if you have something to say and you have something to offer, someone will recognize you. You just have to get out there and be recognized or get in front of the people that are gonna take you to the next level. So this next song is also off uh, the latest corn record called The Nothing. And this is a vinyl I'm holding. Please buy records, kids. It really helps support the music industry out there. It really does. And you get cool things like this. So this song's called Harder off this record. Now, a lot of people will come up to me and they're like, I don't understand. I see you play. Sometimes you're left hand on the hi-hat. Sometimes you're right. What are you? And I'm like, well, I'm kind of ambidextrous. You know, I started playing left-handed, but I am a right-handed uh, player and I write right-handed. So it's just whatever comfortable you know when people buy your record they don't really care if you started with your left foot if your right foot if you played the hi-hat with your right hand how does it sound how does it feel is it moving me is the emotion there so that's what i always you know people always say you're so strange the way you play so this song is a good example of that because in the verses you'll notice i'm on the uh, left hand on the hi-hat and then when i'm doing ghost notes i'll switch over so um like i had some fun with this there's some blast beats towards the end and some really cool double bass stuff so enjoy
a lot of people ask me, like, what do I do backstage? What do I do before a session to warm up, to get my arms ready to go and prepare for battle? If you see me play with corn, you know, you see sticks flying in the air. I'm hitting very hard, very aggressive. Uh, but if you notice my technique, um, I'm very loose with my sticks, you know. Um, I think it's really important to prevent carpal tunnel and any kind of injuries you might have. You know, I've been bashing my brains out for a very long time and knock on everything. I haven't had any injuries. So, um, but that comes from proper technique. So when you're playing on a practice pad or, you know, when you're in your practice lab on a kit, really be conscious of like stick heights, you know, how clean you're playing. Cl clean playing is everything to me. You can always play sloppy, right? So really pronounce everything. If you're playing a flam, mean that flam. If you're playing a double stroke roll, really get that double out, you know, pronounce it so it can be heard. This first exercise I'm gonna uh, share with you is a very simple one but it's something I've been doing for decades and I, it's, it's a, like a religious thing I have to do now before a show. If I don't do this, my brain tells me like, you didn't do something, you're not prepared. So this is something I do and it's basically a triplet exercise. You can count them one in the two in the, or one ta ta, however you count triplets. Basically you're putting the accent on the one, the second ta and then the third ta. So tap foot, you know, tap your right foot, tap your left foot. If you're on the kit, keep, you know, eighth note triplets pulse with your uh, hi-hat and keep quarter notes on your kick. So basically it goes like this. Well, make sure you use a metronome. You can use, you know, these days on your iPhone, you can download, there's probably nine or 10 you know, metronome apps you can put on your phone. So that's what I usually do. And I start at maybe like 70, 75 BPMs and I'll take it up to 120, 130. Speed is not important. You know, the cleanliness of your playing is most important. So let's start, I'm just, I don't have a metronome right now. I'm just gonna tap my foot, start like, Now we go to the left hand. So you notice I'm playing very high accent and low notes. You don't want to play or you really, really nail that accent and leave the other notes low. Why? Because it makes your playing more rounded. When you're on the kit and you're doing a funk groove or something, you have more dynamics now. You have a range of high notes and low notes. When you're hitting, there's all this space, right, for high notes. A lot happens in that space before you strike the drum or the cymbal. So really watch your accents, you know. So now we can do some doubles with that. Where we originally put the accent, put a double and let it bounce. So you get two, you know, two notes for the one stroke. So. And again, with your doubles, really make sure so when you're playing doubles, of course, you know, the two notes, if you're playing three notes, you know, whatever you're playing, make sure it's nice and clean pronounced like we were talking about before. Buzz roll on a drum pad, there you go. <laughs> so this next one is uh, called Elevation. I was in this um, kind of a proggy band back in the day called the Hideous Sun Demons. We had a song called Elevation and basically you're climbing numbers. You go one, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, the whole way up to eight, and then you go back to the beginning. So alternating, it's gonna sound like this. One, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? so on and so forth, different speeds. And again, leave those notes way down and really nail those accents. And another very, very simple one that you've probably heard a million times, but it's super effective, is the good old 16th note. So you're taking each permutation, the one, the E, the N, and the uh. So again, super, you know, get your posture on, get, make sure you're not, you know, if you're right-handed, don't make sure your right's not over, you know, stepping your left. That's one of my biggest pet peeves when you hear someone do a roll and they're going, you know, get those strokes up. Play a single. You know, I'm kind of looking at that imaginary line up here and making sure all my, my notes are up there. So when you're doing this exercise, start off going 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a 4E and a 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a 4E and a 1E and a 2E and a 3E. 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a 4E and, right? Same.
Now if you put doubles on those, exact same exercise, right? By doing this and breaking them down like that, your double stroke rolls will become way clean, right? There's nothing worse than We've all done it. I know I have. Get those, get that left hand up. If you're left hand, get that right hand up. Use a small. So to me, attitude is everything. You have to have the right attitude going into things. And I don't care what level it's on, how small or how big it is. Your self attitude has everything to do whether you, those people you're in that room with want to be around you, they want to take you on tour. They want they want you to you know perform and write music with them. It's such a huge element, and a lot of people forget that. There's a lot of people out there that have lost gigs, and they're virtuosos on their instrument, but they've lost gigs because they've had a they've you know maybe been tardy to rehearsals, or they, they came unprepared, or you know they just had a bad attitude and thought that they were at a certain level when it really doesn't matter. So when you're in a band situation, you know, you're communicating with these people on a musical level, but also as humans. You know, you have to have the right attitude when you're walking into the room. You can't walk in there going, oh, I had the worst day ever. And now, now let's, okay, let's get to playing. You know, you don't want to ever, you know, you want to kind of bury that a little bit because you're there to, to perform the best you possibly can. And when you're in a live situation, you're all trying to be, you know, as one, as a unit, as a force. Because those audience people will know that, you know, they'll know whether, you know, you're not on your game that night. We all have bad nights, trust me, I've had mine. But you, there's a thing about the entertainment business, and that's what this is. You're in the entertainment business that you're an entertainer on stage. You have to throw down. You know, there's been times where I've been on a plane to Japan and, and have slept two hours and I'm getting thrown on stage. And those people that paid money, good money, to see your concert, they don't care whether, you know, you've had sleep or not, give them the best show you got. So I'm always making sure my attitude is, is healthy and happy when I'm in any kind of situation. I don't care where you're at, studio, live, show up with a game face, always be leaning forward and get ready to take on whatever's thrown in front of you, you know? So the, my next subject would be auditions. And that ties in with the attitude, punctuality, you know, showing up with your game face, you know, if you're in line, and I've done this many times in Los Angeles, if you're in line with 50, 75, 100 drummers, what do you have that those other guys don't have, or girls, right? I don't know, you have no idea. I've been in so many situations where I have a pair of sticks and you're playing that same five piece kit that everybody else has played and you're playing those three songs that everyone's played all day. What's gonna separate you? You know, I've lost gigs because I didn't have dreadlocks, I was the wrong color, my biceps weren't big enough. You'd be surprised that the gigs I got turned away from in Los Angeles, It's I should write a book just on that. <laughs> but so when you show up, I don't care what it's for, come prepared or overly prepared. And what do I mean by overly prepared? Perfect example, when I got the Jakey e. Lee gig, he played for Ozzy Osbourne in the band called Badlands. In 94, it was my first official tour I was the same exact thing. Like there was, I think there was close to 500 drummers or something auditioning, and I and narrowed down to 100. And I, the same thing. I'm like, man, what do I have? What's this guy? So I'm a huge Ozzy Osbourne fan and Badlands. So I did some homework and research, and I went back and learned the entire Ozzy catalog and Badlands, everything that Jake ever played on, to be prepared in case maybe we could play one of those songs. So. I was number, I think, 25 that day out of 25 drummers, and they were so burnt and they were tired and they're leaning against the amps. And they said, "All right, what's your name? All right, what, what do you got?" And I said, "I really like to play, you know, um, Soul Stealer off the Badlands record." And they're like, "Yeah, let's just stick to the three demo songs." And I said, "Yeah, but..." And then the bass player stood up and he kind of started figuring out Soul Stealer. And Jake goes, "You're playing that wrong. It's it's here and it's..." Next thing you know, there's a different energy in the room. Everyone kind of stood up and we're playing. And, and he's like, wait, what are we doing? Next thing you know, I'm counting off the song. And it totally changed the vibe of the room. There was a whole different energy. People were like, ah. And then the other drummers got PO'd outside because they're like, hey, why is he getting to play that? I didn't force it. I just simply brought it up like, hey, I love this song. I appreciate it. Why don't we jam on that? So lo and behold, 
they told everyone to go home, I got the gig. So that led to two and a half years of my first touring ever. So as a lot of people know the music business, a lot of things are short lived out there, especially in the rock and roll game. Um, bands careers are five, seven years. If you have a couple hits, you might go to 10. The bigger bands out there, you know, obviously I'm in the band Korn. This is their 26th year. It's my 14th year with a band, which is insane to me because you never know when it's going to end. No one's got a crystal ball. So you always want to keep a good reputation for yourself out there. You always want to be like, hey, let's call that guy. He's easy to work with. He gets stuff done. He's prepared. He's honest. He's, you know, there's no BS. That's huge because the last thing, I don't care how great you are on your instrument, the last thing you want is, oh man, that guy's, man, he's so amazing, but God, I can't stand to be in the same room with him. And man, he doesn't shower on the tour bus. And I, you'd be surprised that stuff happens. So that's super, super important, you know. You want, once you have that one gig, you network, you give the sound guy, you give the monitor guy, the bass tech, you start giving your number out to everyone because if someone liked you out there on that crew and on the, the audience that saw you, you will get a call for another gig. So I can't emphasize enough how much it, you know, how important it is to put in the hours. You gotta put in the work. It takes tons and tons of time. You know, I see people watching YouTube and, and for hours and hours and hours, you know, I'm guilty too on airplanes and stuff that I do, but you get off of that, you know, it's okay to watch something to inspire you, to get inspired and go, wow, this makes me want to go practice. Then go sit in your lab or sit in your drum room, whatever you have to do for hours at a time, but you got to put in the work, you know, and us as drummers, you know, we're timekeepers and it takes time to build time. Your internal clock doesn't just happen. You know, it took me years and years. I remember when I went to Musicians Institute, the staff was amazing. You know, I had Ralph Humphrey, Joe Picaro, uh, R Richie Garcia, Efren Toro. The staff was insane. And I thought I was kind of hot stuff coming off the farm in PA. And little did I know, my timing was really bad. And uh, I had to get a metronome. And that was a rude awakening for me because I'm like, yeah, but did you hear that lick? I was playing 64th notes. And they didn't care. They're like, if you want a job, your timing has to be happening. You know, um, most of the drummers out there, you're going to get a gig playing four on the floor at 120 BPMs and not moving time. You know, all the fancy fills, the flashy licks and all that, that's that's cool, you know, but let's face it, to get a drumming gig out there, your timing has to be together. So this next song is from my side band called KXM and it features George Lynch on guitar from Dockin' and Lynch Mob and Doug Pinnock from the amazing underrated band King's X, one of my favorite bands of all time. Um, so we just have fun with this project, you know, our whole thing is we do you know, 12 or 13 songs in a 12 or 13 day period. We write one song a day and by the evening time, I'm tracking drums for the record and we move on. We don't overthink anything. So we have a lot of fun with this. There's no producers breathing down our backs. It's 100% us. So this next song called Faith is a Room, I really had fun. It's a straight ahead song, four on the floor with a crash. But you'll notice in the verses, it's kind of like, a, like almost a linear kind of pattern um, down the toms in between the snare and the hi-hat. And I just had a lot of fun doing it. So check this out, Faith is a Room.
So your timing definitely has to be together, but I can't emphasize enough, and I'll tell you to I'm blue in the face. You gotta put in the hours, you gotta put in the work and the sweat. Go see shows, you know, go listen to a ton of music. If you're a rock fan, listen to jazz, listen to classical, listen to reggae, listen to different different stuff. It broadens your vocabulary so much mentally, and then try to play it physically. Because let's face it, if you wanna be a session guy out there, if you get, you know, you don't want to be pigeonholed into, oh, he's the rock guy, oh, he's that guy, you know. So the more you know, obviously, the better you're going to be, and the broader your vocabulary is, the more gigs you're going to get. So, and that's just a fact. I mean, the more you know, I, I of course, I'm a rock metalhead. You know, that's my favorite thing. That's what I get called to do. You know, I don't get many jazz calls. I don't get many, you know, uh, timpani calls. But I love that stuff, and I embrace it. I listen to constantly you know i listen to many different styles all the time if you look at my playlist it's not you know metallica and, and, and slipknot it's classical i got bach and beethoven and i got ziggy marley and then i got you know classic rock and i got you know jazz i got chick Corea. i got you name it it's in there because it helps out whatever style you're favored in so this next song is also off corn the nothing and it's called idiosyncrasy and it's one of my favorite songs off of there it's kind of reminiscent of like kind of early Pantera-ish kind of riffs. Um, use a lot of bell, heavy bell, the shoulder stick on there. I use a lot of the gong drum, which I love. The gong drum just has some massive attack about it. I love pummeling this thing live in an arena. You know, you hit that thing over 15,000 people and it's just a big punch in the gut. It's awesome. So this song is called Idiosyncrasy. Check it out.
Hey, thanks a lot for joining me tonight. I hope you learned something. I had fun doing this. Thanks to all the staff that put this on. They worked very hard to bring this to you at home or on your laptop, wherever you're watching it. Remember, you got to put the work in. You got to put the hard hours in and be a good person. You know, everything comes back to who you are as an individual. Remember, that's what you want to be known for, your individuality. So you got to work hard. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you on the road this summer. Take care.